What's up, YouTube? Derbador Weldar here, coming at you for another video. Yes, I look like a homeless man. It's that time of the year, hunting season. I always kind of get a little burly during hunting season, and you know, also a little bit of extra insulation this time of the year. Gotta take advantage of the gift God gave you. So anyway, we're gonna be tackling something I have a problem with in my old trucks all the time. And it's not just my trucks, it's a lot of these old trucks here. They have a problem with something called vapor lock, all right? And it is vapor building up in the fuel system because of heat. Basically, back before the government got involved in making fuel and whatnot, fuel used to be 100% petroleum. Now it is 10% ethanol. Ethanol is alcohol. Alcohol boils at a lower temperature than petroleum, which means it turns into a vapor at a lower temperature than petroleum. The ethanol is used as the octane booster so they can make crappier gas, stick 10% ethanol in there to make it somewhat function like 100% petroleum gas. Now, because of this, these old trucks, their fuel system was not really meant for 10% ethanol. You can put 10% ethanol in there. Everything I have in my trucks is actually made up for up to 20% ethanol. Every single part I replace in there, I redo, all my trucks get brand new fuel systems. The problem, the only problem is in the summertime, you sit there at a light, all that heat builds up, it builds into the fuel system, and the gas literally boils and turns into a vapor, creating a bubble in that system, and you now have a gap, probably about this big of no gas in your fuel system, or bigger, depending. So. How do you do this? You keep your fuel cool. There are different ways. On modern vehicles that use EFI, the pressure is insanely higher than a carbureted. A carbureted vehicle uses five to six PSI in the fuel system going up to the carburetor. An EFI system uses 60 plus PSI. Now remember our basic, basic physics and whatnot, the higher the, pre the higher pressure that your fluid is under, the more temperature it takes for it to boil versus lower, right? So if it's 60 PSI, it takes a lot more heat to make that fuel in that 60 PSI system boil versus the 6 PSI system. So how do we get around this? We obviously can't make it 60 PSI because the carburetor is not meant for it. We could put a Phytech or a Holly Sniper on there. Those cost a lot of money and it's not just a thousand dollar investment. It's another two thousand dollars in all this stuff. Look it up guys. I've looked into it. Trust me, it's a lot more than just the initial investment. Look up people who've had these systems years later. They're not bad, but they're a very big investment and you're stuck with it once you put it in there, all right? It's not very easy to go back to a carburetor. But those of us who are just hardcore gotta have a carburetor, there is a solution. What's the other way of keeping fuel cool? If you notice on an EFI system, the fuel goes up to your fuel rail and then returns back to the tank and it's a constant loop. Why is that? Because the fuel stays in the system, like on a carburetor system, it just goes up to the carburetor and then if the carburetor doesn't need any, it stays in the line and doesn't go anywhere. It just stays in place. There's a way around this. Back in the day, they actually made fuel filters that have a nut, that have a exit. So you have one that goes to your carburetor and one that returns back to your line and this this valve will open about seven or eight psi which means the carburetor float has come up to the top it, the carburetor is saying i don't need any more fuel so instead of all the fuel backing up and staying in the line and sitting there and soaking and heating and then boiling all that fuel now bypasses the carburetor goes into the tank gets returned cooled off in a giant pool of cool fuel in your tank and then it's picked back up and the cycle continues until the float in the carburetor drops, allowing more fuel into the carburetor. Let me show you. So here is the fuel system on my 390FE and my 74F350. We can see the pump is down underneath the power steering pump. This is our input line to a mechanical pump. Then it's pumped up here and goes into the carburetor. There's our filter, right? So when the carburetor float goes up saying, I don't need any more fuel, all the fuel stops in this line right here. And all the heat from the engine bleeds into this, right? And it just bleeds and it boils off and boils 
until there's a pocket of air in there. And that's why when I, when I, on a hot day, when I move off a light, it goes <laughs> and doesn't want to take off and move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this fuel filter that has a return in it right here. This is going to be piped into that return line. This is going to replace the fuel filter everybody on YouTube is freaking out about that I own. It's going to replace my glass fuel filter everyone hates. And that line will just go right down to there and then return to the fuel tank, creating a continuous loop. And the 306 is infamous, absolutely infamous for vapor locking. It is what this engine is very much known for because there's your exhaust manifold right there. So all this heat builds up right here on this side of the engine. So you gotta keep the fuel cool somehow. So this is my solution. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't completely work, I'm just gonna put a freaking 12 volt fan right here blowing across the whole system and that should and fix it. the part it. that's really gonna suck is I'm not gonna know if this works until the middle of summer because this truck does not vapor lock unless it's 95 degrees outside and the air conditioner's on and I sat at a light for five minutes. So I'm not gonna know if this actually works like it's supposed to until the middle of summer. Basically, it's going to be six months before I find out if this works. But why not do it on a nice, cold December day and get the system functioning like it's supposed to and then just wait. Oh, my God, it's working. I'm dumping money on the ground. What the hell am I doing? All right, listen up, boys and girls. So that steel fuel line that hasn't been used in a uh, steel fuel line, it's like 40 years old. It hasn't been used in 30. Probably should not be trusted for this. So... I'm going to take all that steel fuel line out and I'm just going to run some new fuel line through here all the way back to the return on the tank up there at the top. So a couple hurdles I found I got to deal with. One, obviously the leaking fuel line. Two, the rollover valve or the vent on top will not does not like fuel going down into it. So, and probably ain't a good idea to be using that to pump fuel back into the tank anyway. So, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of solution to send fuel into the tank that doesn't involve welding and doesn't involve blowing myself up. So, I think I got a couple solutions. I just got to sit down and think about okay, it. Okay, so I've dropped the tank out the truck. Which actually not as miserable of an experience as I was expecting it was going to be. Because the tank is actually pretty simple to get out of this truck. So, yay! The solution for the return. I've come up with a no-weld solution because I hate welding on gas tanks that have had fuel in them. It's one of my things I really, 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 really hate. So, I found this neat nifty thing on Amazon. Drill a three-quarter inch hole. This goes in. This goes in on the back. Tightens up. And then... This goes in DOS like so. And I'm going to put it right about here. That way it'll dump right in next to the... Way it'll dump right in next to the pickup. And there's actually room I can get in here and put the nut on the back of it. Now, right since I started filming this video... I installed the fuel return line system in my 350. I went and got another one of these. They're like eight bucks at O'Reilly's. So I have, you can see, comes up from the pump into here. When this pressure builds up here, the carburetor's not asking for more fuel. It'll bypass, go along that line across the intake and down, down behind the transmission. There you see it crosses over to the fuel rail, right? Not the fuel rail, to the frame rail right there. Then goes back to the tank. So when I built this tank, one of the first things I did was weld in that bung right there. And at this point, the, the tank is brand new, and it was brand new when I got it. So it never had fuel in it. So I was able to drill a hole, weld it, and install that little angle bung right there. And that is the return line back into the tank, sitting right next to my pickup. And since doing that mod to this truck, I've noticed it has a lot more pickup off of a light. I know it seems really weird, but even on a cold winter, cold-ish winter, 
that we have here in North Carolina, it's it now has more whoosh off of a light after I've sat there for a while, even in the cold. So in the summertime, I'm betting it's going to be a huge improvement over when it gets really, really hot, the 350, it would be like, give it gas, go, wham, buh, 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 wham, and then it would go. And that buh, 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 is guaranteed vapor lock because everything else in it works perfectly fine. As soon as it gets cold, it doesn't have that stuttering anymore, and it doesn't have that stuttering before the engine warms up. So it's guaranteed it's vapor lock. And so that's why I'm going to put this system in all of my trucks and in every truck I build. I hole sawed it. Obviously, I filled this with water and washed it out before I started drilling. But hole saw, and I was barely able to get that nut on the back of it right there. But the cool thing is there's that little washer thing on it that locks the back in. You can tighten it from the front here. And you just tighten it. And it pulls the back piece of rubber up against it, sealing it. And then put our our barb in there, five sixteenths, and we run our return fuel line to that right there.